This is GitOps, and it's Tuesday, so let's talk Terraform. I'm Olaf Gradin, a cloud architect by day and a technology advocate by night. I'm joined by Jason Ford, an IT platform consultant. Jason, what's life like living underground for so long? Well, you know, I had a baby, so um, it really hasn't changed much. Like, you know, COVID has pretty much locked us outside of our house, and now my baby does. So um, I see some sunlight now. I like stick my hand up to the window, maybe get some vitamin D, but I think I'm good. I don't know if you saw the time machine, especially the original uh, time machine movie or read the book, uh, but there were the, the Morlocks and mm -hmm. the Morlocks were the underground dwellers that, that went underground during a nuclear fallout and never returned. And so they became Morlocks. Uh, and so maybe there's some variation on that theme for pandemic people who uh, secluded and have never returned. And so they are the, the Morlocks of the pandemic era. <laughs> it's, it is extremely awkward to be in large groups right now and have a conversation. <laughs> You're like, okay, well, can I just go put my sweatpants back on? You know? <laughs> All right. So today we're going to talk about ternary logic. Uh, and to be honest, ternary is not a, a word that I use in my everyday diction. Um, so for, for those like me who don't use that word every day, ternary just means that something is made of three parts. So you could describe a lot of things as ternary, uh, but in, in development and coding practice, uh, it's generally some sort of logical construct like a for loop or an if loop or other things that, that use logic in three parts. So I will share a screen and we can get into describing what those three parts are. In Terraform, you're somewhat limited because it is not a um, it is not a coding language like your typical coding language. So when we think of JavaScript, for instance, there's a lot of ways that you might use logic scopes to to work your code, procedural mm -hmm. code especially. But in Terraform, it's not quite the same. So I'll go over a couple of examples. Well, actually, I'll I'll go over some maybe some impractical impractical uses of of the code just to kind of demonstrate how it works. Right. And then we'll, I'll get into an example that actually makes sense for everybody. The first thing I want to do is just set up a variable and I'm going to call this one index and I'm not going to give it a, actually I will get a, a default of one. So we've got a number and then I'm going to create a locals block to exercise that. So I'm going to create an index. And so an example of the ternary logic here is that I want to do something to that variable. But first, I need to check to see where that variable is. And then uh, I can set it one way if if true and one way if false. So the way that Terraform expresses that is that I can say, look at var index. And if var index is less than 10 in this case, then um, we're going to put a zero. We're going to put a zero in front of it. This is, as I said, an impractical uh, exercise, but one that I think demonstrates it pretty well. So I'm going to put a zero in front of the number, and then print the number again. Simple as that. If it's not less than zero, which is to say that it's greater or less than 10, which is to say that it is 10 or greater, then uh, just print the, the variable. All right, and then we'll try to output that. And I'm just running Terraform plan because it's gonna show us what we actually need. Uh, and so we will see Okay, so we uh, actually, I'm going to clear that and then I'll just run plan again. 
So we can see after running plan that I have um, zero one now expressed. And if I change that, let's say, we're gonna change the value of index to uh, 11, just so we can see the difference. So now we can see that our output is 11, no preceding zero. So if it's, again, the, the way that this is structured is that we're going to inspect a variable. Uh, I'm going to check it against a condition, which in this case is less than 10. And then I'm using a question mark to say, if true. Uh, and then I'm using a colon to say else. So the ternary logic is one, two and three. So those are our, our three pieces of the, the logical code. And that's how it always works. Let me show another example. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to create, uh, we'll create a list. And it will be a list of numbers, in fact. So we'll say that the default equals Okay, so now we have a, a list one through five, and I'm gonna do the same thing I did before and just use a locals block to play with that. And in this case, I want to look at um, var list, and I wanna know if var list is less than 10. But as it is, this isn't gonna work because var list is a a list and not a string, so it's not going to work in a comparison operator. So instead, I'm just going to put a um, a length command on it. So now we're going to check to see if the length of that list item is less than 10. If it is, then I'm going to change that to be 10. Make it 10, right? Uh, if it if it is 10 or greater, then again, just print list. All right, and then we will want this to be local. All right, and then we'll run plan again. So we can see here that my default list was only five items, which does not meet our, our if statement. And so uh, as a result of that, it changed it to match what we asked for. So if true, then make it 10. And so you can see that it made the list 10 items here. And just like in before, if I change, uh, it's actually easier to do this in the code rather than on the command line. So we'll just change that to 10, 10 items. And so now you can see that the, the list is respecting my default, one through 10. So this kind of gives you an example of, of how the ternary logic works. Now let's take a, a quick look at using it for something practical. All right, this time I want to set up a, a system where I I have a deployment that can either go to um, production or non-production, and it's gonna be based upon an environment variable that I pass in. So we're just gonna say, or rather something I call environment, it's not an actual environment variable. Uh, so we're gonna, we're not gonna give it a default, actually I'm just gonna give it a type. So now we have an, uh, a variable called environment, that's a better way to say it. And I, from that, want to create a resource group. And so before I said this was an Azure RM provider, and so that's how we're gonna build it. I'll remember this eventually. Actually, let's call this one. Um, we want it to be prod.
So effectively, I want to take that environment variable and influence whether I am creating a production uh, resource group, a, a named production resource group. So if I, if I just set this up to create my resource group like this, and give it a location, that's fine. Then what I'm going to get here, and we can I may have to init it. Yep. What we'll get here is basically without regard to the environment variable that I pass, I'm going to get the resource group designated for prod. Um, so I put in what is, because I didn't set up a default, it's going to ask me what it wants that variable to be. And I'm saying I want the variable to be dev. Okay, so as a result of the plan output, we can see that we are creating in the West US a resource group called RGProd01. It is exactly as the code intended, but it is not exactly what I intend. So then I, I know that I also need a, uh, I need a resource group that's gonna be non-prod as well. And this one's gonna be non-prod. And uh, I don't want this one to be in West US. I want this one to be in East US because this is our non-prod region. So now I know that I'm gonna get two resource groups and they're gonna be in two separate locations, but I wanna use that environment variable. So if I look at ternary logic, I can use that environment variable that I have. And in this case, I'm just gonna use count and what count does is it actually allows us to specify um, a number of objects and iteration of resources. In this case though, it's more like a Boolean. So if count is zero, it will not create it. If count is one, then it, it obviously will create it. So I'm gonna uh, use the environment variable that we, that we included, so var env. And what I'm looking for is, um, I'm actually gonna do it this way. I'm gonna say if it's, not equal to prod, uh, then I want to set this to zero. But if it is equal to prod, then I want to create it, uh, set it to one. So I, I set it up this way because in this case, I'm sort of focused on prod and my names match up and so that's just kind of convenient, I guess. It could go either way though. I could have said if it equals prod, then set it to one. Uh, and then at this point, I know that I'm not going to get a, a prod resource group if the environment is not prod, uh, but I will always get a resource group for non-prod regardless of what it's set to. So I need to create a ternary operation for this one as well. I'm going to use the same invari environment variable, and I'm going to say if it's not equal to... So here, here's a good reason why I'm using prod as well, because in non-prod, let's say I have a lot of different regions. I have dev, test, QA, lab, you know, whatever. But in prod, I really just have prod in my situation. You may have more, and so you may have to change this logic. So I'm going to say if it's not equal to prod again. So if it's not equal to prod, then that means it must be some non-prod environment. So I'm going to say it's one. And then I'm going to actually, let's do this. I'll keep the logic the same. If it is equal to prod, it's the same as above, right? I just set it to zero. And then one if it's not equal to prod. Okay, so what we have here then is the, the ternary operation that we had before. We've got an environment condition, which is measuring whether it is or isn't equal to prod. And then I have a true statement and a false statement in each one of these. So what that should do Based on the value that I put in here, and let's say I'm gonna say dev, 
it's telling me then that based on the fact that it is a dev environment, I am only creating a non-prod resource group, which is exactly what I want. I know that text is kind of small down there, but trust me, <laughs> it says non-prod. Um, and just to kind of prove the point, I can also run this using prod. Uh, so here, in fact, specifying prod, then it's creating a production resource group. So it's, it's behaving exactly as I intended. I can feed in an, an environment type and I will get the resultant resource group that I'm interested in. Now let's take this a little further because I, I wanna do something a little bit different with, um, with my ternary. Right now I'm just using it as a, as a Boolean, but I want to go a little further because I have so many different non-prod environments. Uh, I want to further this one. So in this case, I'm going to forget about location equals and instead just focus on my three-part logic. If var environment equals dev, then I want to go in East US. Otherwise, I need it to go in East US too. Okay, and I think that actually helps a lot. If I ignore the part to the left, the assignment part, uh, and just focus on the logic itself, it makes a lot more sense. So reading that from left to right, if var dot environment uh, equals dev, then set the location to east US. Else, set the location to east US too. So the, the, the assignment occurs to everything after the question mark. All right, we'll save that because I'm not in PyCharm and I can't assume it's auto-saving. We'll run plan. And this time I want to set test as my environment. And that's it. So we've got uh, test environment specified. I'm creating a non-prod resource group and its location is Eastern US 2, uh, which is exactly how I defined it within the, the logic. So that's a good practical example of, of how we might use um, the ternary logic to control our code. When you look up the documentation on count, they don't really talk about this. Um, it tells you like you can use it to create multiple resources if you want a multiple, but um, my point is I use it for ternary logic and enable and disabling things more than I've ever used it to create multiple resources. Uh, that, that is a good point. I, I use this almost everywhere in my code, depending on the situation, um, because it just makes things easier. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. Okay. So that is ternary logic and, uh, that is a wrap for today's video. Yeah. Um, that was great. Thank you. <laughs>